is Rap the News. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Dragon's Tale again, which are meteorites following behind a planet that people mistaken for Starlink and UFOs. Those are not UFOs out there. We are going to zoom in closer now and we're going to see exactly what that is. Anybody see a ship in that? No, you don't. Look at the shape of the light, how it's changing from smaller to big as these rocks hurl. So we're going to be looking at these rocks hurling through the sky that's lit. You see them going dim and then going light. They are lit rocks. It is not aerodynamic or anything else. It is not shaped like a spaceship. It is shaped like a rock and everybody should know what it is. This is it zoomed in super, super close. As close as I can get it. And what do you see? Look at the shape of it. We're gonna invert this in a second and we're gonna see what we got there. Look at the shape and then look at the glow outside of the shape. That thing is coming in hot, right? And it's turning, look at it, it's shaped like a rock because it is a rock. There's nothing aerodynamic to that. There is no energy or nothing coming from that except for the heat from or heat signatures from the heat on this damn rock. That's all it is. So if you take a look at what he just showed you, doesn't this look just like it? Just without the glow? Now God is showing it to you in plain view. And in the last video, you can tell that it's no spaceship. It's a fiery rock. And here you can clearly see what it is now. There are two or more videos I ran into just like this one where there is a light around the rock. The reason why I believe it has a white glow around it is because it is hot. That's why the camera is detecting a heat sensory, which when the camera detects a heat, a lot of times it's either going to be a yellow or red glow around the object, or white. In this case, it's a white glow, meaning it is real hot. And when it's glowing white or red, that means that it's really hot. Which is telling you it's not a spaceship, it's a meteorite or an asteroid. And as you see, this red looking rock has the same glow. It's like moving like when you see the heat radiation coming off of a car or something. It being red probably means it's burning. And when people find them landed on the ground, it's still burning because they are brimstone sent by the Lord to destroy the wicked. And there has been 408 wildfires just in California this year. No lie. Look it up for yourself. And I believe these are falling and causing these wildfires and they are just covering it up, saying it's something else. And as God says, prove everything by the scriptures. And that is what we are going to do is read these scriptures. Revelation 8 verse 7. When the first one blew his trumpet, there came hell and fire mixed with blood, which was hurled down to the earth. So we know there has already been hell falling down. And meteorites keep falling down. And I don't know on every camera you film with, but with certain ones, you are allowed to see the heat that these things, these meteorites are letting off from around it. And you can also see the cold that it lets off. When it is cold, supposedly, according to online, it would detect a blue or purple glow around it. Except if you invert the video to a black and white image. But if what is in the sky is lit with blue or green or like an aqua color, you better look out because it is a possibility it can be the chariots of God coming and waiting around to deliver his chosen few. Because again, we are not all going. And the ones who are, who are, we are not going out the same way. And we all have different ranks according to our wisdom and righteousness and our knowledge God bestows on us. And those who actually do their research and actually study the scriptures like God said to study them. Revelation 8 verse 8. Then the second angel sounded and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood. And we already know how big in size meteorites and asteroids can get if they could destroy cities and leave big craters in the ground. And is it possible that a third of the sea turned into blood means a third of life in the sea is going to die off after that. I don't know. And now they are saying there is a black hole under the ocean in the Pacific Northwest. 
and there is a volcano erupting underwater. Earthquakes keep happening, and I believe there is a high possibility that there is going to be a tsunami that is going to take California with it. I don't care if tsunamis never happened before here. Why would it not now? I mean, come on, tornadoes and floods, volcanoes, everything they said never will really happen is happening now because then everyone is under judgment. And this place is about to be utterly destroyed. You may not believe, but you will when it see, when you see this place desolate and destroyed. I believe right now we are in the dust tail of these comets and meteorites that's following Nibiru, that's following this planet hell. And it's filled with dust and meteorites. Thousands of meteorites, thousands of comets whatever you want to call it. And I'm 99% almost sure it is why we are going through it with our health problems right now. Before my father passed, he told me, told all of us that no matter what, don't blame the sickness on nothing else. Not what they're telling you or whatever they're calling it. However, they try to cover it up with many variants. He said everyone dying from heart failure Going through these long, hard to recover illnesses that come coming from God knows where all of a sudden out of the blue. It's all from this planet. And it's the dust from us passing through this tale of comments and meteorites that is getting you sick. Getting in your lungs, making it hard for you to breathe. And he told me that it's the planet. Hell coming closer and it's sucking out all your oxygen from you. Genesis 1924, then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah. Most people may know it, that sulfur is inside of the meteorites. And the same thing that rained down on them is going to rain down in this place and make it desolate. And we know this whole world has turned into Sodom and Gomorrah. And you are going to share the same fate as your forefathers. God is not partial where he's going to destroy one set of people and not the other. Nor does he change. You do the same things as them, you get the same results. And also in the sky, besides the meteors that we keep seeing, is the lava pits from planet hell. And these are lava pits. Straight up lava pits off of the planet. And when we zoom in close to this, it's going to be a little bit different from the rocks. So it might maintain its shape because it's not hurling but it is blowing as it goes past and you see the, it in a dust cloud you see the dust around it but you see it's shooting out sparks and everything else it also shoots out lava from these pits and they drip down and I have caught that so many times I've been studying this for many damn years like, like I said these are lava pits these are not rocks even though lava pits is going to be changing shape as this uh, thing is moving it's going to pretty much maintain its shape then this proves it. A lava planet they so-called discovered recently when they already know it's been out there. All they keep doing, I believe, is renaming Planet Hill over and over again. So you can think it's not all the same thing when it is. But as we know, they leak fire off of them and it makes sense when you match it up to the volcano planet. Because the volcano pits on here match like the ones you see in the sky. And volcano is going to drip lava just like these pits in the sky are doing. God does everything with a purpose. So why on earth would he send a fleet of alien ships in the sky to put on a show for you? The only fleet of ships that will be in the sky is if God is planning to pick up his people soon. Or he is showing a sign that his people will be delivered. That is my beliefs. Okay. Isaiah 66, 15, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots. A chariot is a vehicle. The thing about this chariot is not just the, the passenger place, but the wheel is what we are focusing on here. His chariots is like a whirlwind. And so what is a whirlwind? Round. It's going in, in, a, in a, a, a round way, right? So it ain't this part of the chariot where you see that. It's this part of the chariot that's driving the wheel that everything rolls on. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. 
So again, he's going to lift us out of the place with his chariots like a whirlwind. The chariots are like a whirlwind. So if you look at the box part, that don't look like a whirlwind. But if you look at the wheel, that would more resemble a whirlwind. And we're just talking from our levels of understanding here. No disrespect. Whirlwind definition, a column of air rapidly moving around and around. Right? A circle. So, like a whirlwind, like a circle going around and around. So, now we have a chariot, a vehicle that goes round and round. Right? Just trying to get an understanding. So, we can look at something like this. Whirlwind definition. A column of air moving rapidly round and round. But we are looking for not only wind going round and round, but also a chariot, a vehicle that goes round and round. And Ezekiel was described as a wheel within a wheel. Second Kings 6.17 And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, Open his eyes, the man who couldn't see, the chariots and the angels, and they could see. Because just like he's trying to say, you have a man standing there with Elijah and Elisha, and he's saying, okay, we screwed. And then they saying, how are we screwed? Can you not see? And he's saying, see what? So they had to pray to open this man's eyes up so he can see. And when, when the Most High God opened his eyes up, he saw the chariots of the most high God, and he saw the angels. So he said, he opened up his eyes of the young man, and he saw, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots, vehicles that go round and round. Ezekiel 1.16, the appearance of the wheel and their work was like unto the color of barrel, like a aquamarine or a bluish green color and they four had one likeness and the appearance of their work was as if it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel let's go back to the chariot again because it keeps talking about wheels a wheel and in the middle looks like a wheel a wheel within a wheel that is what it looks like so it can look like this Bam. A wheel. And these are ancient. These are ancient wheels. Back around the time. These are ancient wheels around that time. A wheel within the wheel. So this is what wheels look like back then. Right? So what did that look like today if that was coming out of the sky? Exactly. We ain't getting in those. I am. So I, I'm open minded. There's more. So it can, if you look at this, this is called a sun halo right here to the left. It, this looks like a wheel on the outside and a wheel on the inside, a wheel within a wheel. How do we enter that? How do we go? How does it all work? Don't know. But it can be considered. Then you got a spacecraft right here next to this. And right here next to it. And it, it looks like a wheel. Like on a chariot. That's why they're using the word chariot. We want to focus on the wheel within the wheel. Barrel color is emerald green. Aquamarine, greenish blue. Or something like that. So we look for these greenish blue ships. The people that know. You know, and the government can make ships, but you should know the difference. You know, you should know what's from God and what was man-made. Every Hebrew ain't going to the kingdom. And we all are not leaving here in the same way. So we got many scriptures saying that people are going to people are going to be here on this earth, tending the land, making it milk and honey. And some people, according to your deeds and righteousness, is just going to be somewhere the fuck else. 
And I just put that. You curse too much. There it is. The fuck else. Isaiah 16, number 9. Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarsus first to bring thy sons from afar with their silver and they go with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel because he has glorified them. So watch this. So some people is going on the ships of Tarsus which some people believe are the ships from Britain. Right? Some people is going to be lifted out. Some people is going with God when he comes in a shout in the trumpet, right? This is what, this is what we, we, it ain't all the same way. We are not all on the same levels. We are different people doing different things. Some people don't deserve shit, so they're going to be in a lowly place. And some people deserve to be in a higher place. Isaiah 49, 22, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people and they shall bring thy sons in thy arms and thy daughters shall be carried on your shoulders. So they bringing it, bringing you. Well, back into slavery, no, into the promised land. Jeremiah 32, 37, behold, I will gather them out of all the countries. Now, God, whether, whether I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. So you can go right back to Jerusalem. Don't mean we all going to the same places by the same way. And he also states, ye shall not be left unpunished. You ain't going to no damn happy place. Some people have to get their ass punished. A third got to be brought through the fire. And melt it like gold is melted. To get away all of the dross, the iniquity. So we ain't, it's like a person with, with all, without all that iniquity, they don't have to go through the fire like that. We ain't, we ain't all going, this is the end here. You know? And we get delivered in different ways. And, and, and I'm proving it with the scriptures. If you don't want to believe, you don't have to believe. I ain't going back on this. You can see. Look through the scriptures that I'm showing you again. Isaiah 10, 22. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet only a remnant, remnant shall return. So everybody ain't going. Let's keep going. And we also know we have been delivered before in multiple ways. Jesus was taken up into a cloud. Ezekiel was taken up into a cloud. The remnant is going to be taken and transported by God. Noah was delivered by a ship. The children of Israel walked. Lot ran. You know? And so these are all different ways. God does what he wants. You know? And none of us can say, definitely, God himself, by some big old hand, is going to come out and we're going to step on his fingernails and get in. No. No. The cloud is going to blow us up. No. We're going to walk to Jerusalem. No. It's whichever way God want to take us. And that's what all these verses are saying. You know. And, and these wheels ain't for nothing. Let's go back up to the top again. The chariots of the Most High God are 20,000. It's 144,000 supposedly of us. You figure out and do the math of that and see how many it seats. This is Rap the News.